Okay. So I, uh, this presentation is quite long, so I'm going to have to rush through a bit of it because I don't want to cross over the time limit. Um, basically, my goal with this is to present sort of a case study that will show you where archaeology and all the other environmental sciences blur together. Uh, with archaeology being a recent addition to the faculty environment, this is sort of a question that I felt needed to be answered a little more explicitly for some people. And I'm going to be using this uh, famous civilization that's very enigmatic disappearance has always been explained in a manner of ways, and I want to try to synthesize them and sort of look at it from a multi-factorial perspective. So briefly, just your organization of my presentation, just going to give you a brief, very brief rundown of who I'm talking about, the culture, so you understand a little bit. I want to characterize what happened when this civilization disappeared and offer you sort of what uh, different explanations, a pure archaeological one, a very geographical one, and a very uh, climate science-based one, and then offer sort of a synthesis of all three. So very briefly, uh, Minoan civilization is a Bronze Age society that was on this island of Crete in the Mediterranean. Um, it's a very massive uh, influence around in the, very, in the region. Um, they lasted for several thousand years, and then within 100 years or so, completely vanished. Um, so some of their cultural traits that you may recognize, you've seen some of these photographs, they have a lot of very bright colored artwork, very peaceful, very exciting to look at. And it sort of influenced a lot of unusual interpretations of the whole culture, and that this sort of, they may be different from other human cultures in some way. Um, this is my favorite artifact of all time, and it's very integral to my argument here, so I'm going to present it as its own slide. Uh, they have this really well-known style of art where they put these weird looking sea creatures all over everything. We're going to come back to this, so I just want to sort of burn that image in your mind for a second. <laughs> okay, so this is their chronology. I'm not going to go over the whole thing, because really all we're talking about is a junction between this Middle Minoan and Late Minoan period. It's between these two periods that the culture reaches its absolute zenith. It becomes the most powerful it's ever been, and immediately after that, it falls so fast it will blow your mind. <laughs> so what happened? Why did they disappear? There's three theories. There's uh, what's called the Mycenaean invasion theory, sort of the first theory that appeared, and it's uh, very archaeologically based. It doesn't have anything really outside of it. The Theron eruption theory, which we'll get into a little bit later, is more of a geographical, geological explanation, and the climate change theory, which is self-evident. So I'm not going to go through all this, but the Mycenaean invasion theory basically suggests that because the Minoans had no evidence that they were a warlike society, that's one of the unusual traits of them is that people think they were peaceful, that they got wiped out by the mainland Greek cultures and that's why they collapsed. Uh, if you've ever seen movies like Troy or 300, you know that these cultures are supposedly very warlike, barbaric, and would have had probably no problem taking these guys over. Problem is, uh, skeletal evidence doesn't agree with that. People from after their, because the palaces get destroyed around 1450 or something like that, and it's implied that this was them who destroyed it. The thing is that after this happens, it's still a native culture around, they haven't taken over yet. And uh, the idea that they were warlike, weren't warlike has been pretty much disproven by the amount of swords that we've found they're buried with. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Theron eruption theory, uh, it supposes that the uh, volcanic island of Thera, which is modern Santorini, uh, when it erupted in 1600, in one of the most powerful volcanic eruptions ever, completely just wiped them right off the island. They were blown apart and there was nothing left. Uh, problem is, uh, that happened 175 years before they collapsed. So unless we're implying that the tsunami took 175 years to get there, this doesn't really hold up anymore. In addition, their culture rises up afterwards and becomes more powerful. So this is uh, Thera, so you can get an idea of how big a deal this explosion was, because I don't want to take away from these theories. These theories are all still very valid in a way, but they need to be quantified a little more. Um, okay, the climate change theory. Uh, suggests that, um, based on proxy data, that shifts in the El Nino Southern Oscillation around 3000 BC, caused an extreme rudification event around 1350. This is supposed to devastate their agriculture and their trade and cause them to wipe out the whole civilization. Problem is, very weak correlation between the data that they used, and uh, most people have sort of abandoned a climate forcing model. And I hope that's the case for most of you here because that's kind of what we deal with. We want to hope that there is some ability to respond to climate change, and that's sort of the idea I'm arguing here. Uh, this is just showing the data that explains that there was this massive, massive spike where it says 3500 there in the El Nino events, and that's predicted one of the explanations will cause their disappearance. So, here's my theory. <laughs> it's based on another model that was established about between 1995 and 2007 by a woman named Arlene Rosen. It's based on this idea of what's called environmental possibilism. It's that you don't get wiped out by the environment. It's if you don't notice that the climate is changing and you don't respond to it that you get wiped out. So, there's this idea that you can react to it in three ways. What's called a technological approach, social political approach, or an ideological approach. Pretty well self-evident technological involves shifts in agriculture, shifts in trade. Social political is changing the way you distribute the goods within your society. And ideological innovation is, is if you interpret it as being some sort of divine punishment or something like that, you shift towards that as the way of doing things. Uh, this is a very awful graph. Um, <laughs> Processional archaeology is notorious for having really hard to read graphs. The idea that I want to highlight here is that it's, it's implied that it's a social reaction to climate change that's more important than just how effective it is. 
And uh, as we're dealing with here, it's environmental issues. I'm trying to emphasize that it's if we don't act, which we'll see here, we have very, very serious consequences. And this is sort of a way to visualize it for you. So what did the Minoans do? What did they do in face of this drying event and this eruption and all these other things? Right immediately following the eruption of the volcanic island, you see a massive amount of those weird looking jars with the octopus all over them. We're talking from absolutely none to thousands. And there are entire palaces that are now filled with these things. We found human sacrifices that are involved in this. It's very, and there's lots of religious material everywhere that involves this new zone. So this idea that I'm suggesting is that this is a new sort of, it's a new sort of um, response to the eruption of the island of Thera. And this fear from this tsunami and all these other events, they created this new ritual that was meant to sort of appease what they interpreted as being a very enraged god who had erupted this island and obliterated their coastal settlements. Uh, and then as the climate dried, it gets even more intense. You see even more of these things as time goes on. And so, uh, so yeah, as I was saying here, from nothing to 14 large sites, dozens and dozens of these things, in association with other well-established religious material like the double axe, which was in the earlier slides. Um, so here's a picture of a, what's called a riton, and it's their most iconic um, religious piece of paraphernalia, and it's God's press press. <laughs> um, <laughs> so shifts in rely religious practice in response to environmental disasters are not a new phenomenon. I'm not just pulling this out of thin air. Um, a contemporary culture called the Canaanites did the same thing in the southern Levant. Um, the Roman Empire has re written records, and uh, at the exact same time, to the eruption of Thera, the Egyptians recorded that the Pharaoh Amos at the time interpreted it as the wrath of the gods, rebuilt a bunch of temples, and then he responded in the exact same way. So I'm suggesting that no one's did this as a result, well, response to all the different climate changes that are going on. And so what happened was, this is not a very effective response, as I'm assuming it's understood that unless you want to, if you want to survive, you've got to do things like increase agriculture, increase trade. Now, it, at the time in the Bronze Age, they would not have had these sort of visions like we do this sort of clarity, they would have assumed that this could have been a very valid technological response to increase ritual production. It just doesn't seem to work for them. Uh, so other examples exist of people choosing religious innovation over technological innovation. When this failed for the Minoans, their economy and population was absolutely devastated. Pressures at this point would have been too much, their political economy would have collapsed, and the Mycenaean culture, who we do see does take over, but not in a very violent way, seems to have just gradually replaced them as the rulers on Crete. So this is a very clear, I think, example of sort of why you can't just take a single explanation for these things. You can't just assume that when the climate shifts, your, your civilization falls apart and you're gone. It's more about how you see it changing and how you deal with it that's more important. This is a very clear visualization of what happens if you misread what's going on. I'm not suggesting that we would misread this and build a bunch of temples or something in response to the current issues, but we do need to focus a little bit and realize that these are real problems. So, any questions? <laughs>